the last two words of verse 22, came from the lips of the blessed Son of Man, hell fire. If you could take hell from the Bible, which most churches have today, then you could accommodate people in a different way. You could make them comfortable, for there would never be a fear of a future judgment. The Bible makes declarations, definitive statements, declares things to be so. You can believe it or you can reject it. God became man 2,000 years ago. He came into this world and told us things that we had never heard before. We know in the Old Testament that hell is a place. The Bible said the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. So according to the scriptures, hell is a place that literally exists. And it awaits those that, my friend, leave this world unprepared to meet God. If you're very smart today, have half intelligence, you ought to be doing some thinking about where you're going when you leave this world. Are you prepared? I know you prepared your house. I know you prepared your income. I know you prepared your marriage, your children. You planned out your whole life. But you've made no plans whatsoever for where you're headed when you leave this world. There is no salvation in hell. What you've done in this life is what determines where you go. When you die without God, you go to hell. It's waiting. It's a place that my friend has plenty of patience. It doesn't matter if you live 150 years. It won't bother hell one bit. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why he died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. That's why it took the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Folks use that name day in and day out. They use the word hell day in and day out. They become desensitized to it. It has no meaning anymore. It has no punch to it. It doesn't grab the soul and the spirit. Our God is a consuming fire. There's holiness about God. If you could go into the presence of God unsaved, he would literally annihilate you. You'd rather be in hell in a heartbeat than to come before a holy God. And yet I firmly believe hell burns because of the holiness of God. Somebody said hell is separation from God. Who told you that? Where's that in the Bible? Find it from Genesis through Revelation. We're judged by the book, my friend. What does the Bible say? Well, preacher, I want to tell you the truth. I've never read it. That's the truth. Most Christians haven't read it. They've never read it through from Genesis to Revelation. The sad state is that in the church today, most people are as ignorant of the Bible as they can be. That's why they can be tossed from one church to the next church, one doctrine to the next doctrine. What do you base the fact that you don't believe in hell? What do you base it, what do you base it on? Well, I just don't believe God's like that. What do you know about God? What God are you talking about? You ever bothered to read His Word? You ever bothered to read the Word of the God that you say you know about? Read the Bible, you'll find out that God's not too happy with what's going on around us. We live in a generation that's literally brainwashed. I've never seen anything like it in my life. This generation will embrace anything. They'll believe anything, embrace anything. And it's gotten to the point where everybody's desensitized. Nobody's convicted of anything anymore. Satan has brainwashed a whole nation. He's brainwashed them to the point to where sin's no longer sin. Death is no longer death. Human life is, has no value. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. And here's the saddest thing about hell. When you get there, it's too late. Hell is at the end of a Christ-rejecting life. And if the Lord doesn't come back soon, you'll live out your little short life. You'll die, and you're going to go somewhere. Are you ready? How do I stay out of hell, preacher? See, that's the good thing. I don't want to go to hell, preacher. That's good. Thought of it, uh, that worries me, preacher. I don't want to go to hell. That's good. That's good. That's real good. One name. One name given among men whereby we must be saved. Only one name. Only one name. That's the name of Jesus. What does it mean to have him preach? That means you've embraced him. You believe on him. He's in you. He's your savior.